it was a very beautiful story. We're going to conclude with one last story. My good friend Sally Wasserman is going to come up to the Vima as we show the picture from her experience after the war. Sally Wasserman has educated thousands and thousands of young people on the March of Learning and the March of Remembrance pro Home Programs, and also with the Sarah Klein Newberger Center, an eloquent and courageous and exceptionally moving speaker. We're now going to hear a little bit of Sally's story of her history. to talk with this little girl and he told her he can come into the ghetto twice a month because he works for the city to collect for electricity. He asked her what he could bring her when he comes and she asked for food, not for a doll, not for any gloves because she didn't have any not for a spark, for food. And the relationship began between Nikolai Turkin and myself. Nikolai was 62 years old at the time. He had a wife, Eva Turkin, a devout Catholic woman two or three years younger than himself. They did not have children. They married late in life. My mother did not meet Mr. Turkin until a month before the liquidation of the ghetto. She never met Mrs. Turkin at all. Throughout that time when he spoke with her and proposed that when the liquidation of the ghetto will come, that he would like to take me, to hide me, and to save my life. He proposed this to my mother, who was 33 years old, a young Jewish mother with two little children, who really didn't particularly trust a Christian home to take her child. But the desire to save a life, if at all possible, of her child, she agreed in spite of the pain that this caused her. And so the ghetto was liquidated, and I went to Mr. Turkin's apartment in the city of Dombrova, in the middle of the city, and he had a plan to hide me in the cold cellar of the apartment during the day and bring me upstairs for the night. Well, this happened the first day, and when I came upstairs, all covered in solid and dirt. 
he watched her again, took out a look, and she said, never again. And she meant it. She would not allow him to take me down to the cellar again. And so, for over two years, they hid me in their apartment. They shared their rations with me. They began to build a trust in me for them, and eventually a tremendous love they were my family. No one in my family survived. And I became an orphan. I would have been very, very happy to have lived in Poland for the rest of my life with them, for the rest of their lives. But again, there was a sacrifice to be made on their part. They realized after the war that there was no future for me with them in Poland. They were getting on in years and I needed schooling and I needed a family. I needed to be with my people. And so we parted. I was by then 11 years old. I was with them almost four years. I loved them dearly. <coughs> and they truly were my family. Now it is really um, quite common to hear today of people in Poland, Polish people, <coughs> saving, aiding Jews. But do we realize what this means? For two years and three months, Eva and Nikolai Turkin were on pins and needles day and night, not knowing who will knock on the door, who will denounce us, or if I get sick, will they have to call a doctor, and the doctor will be sympathetic and denounce us. They worry about my education, they worried about what will happen. They just worried day and night. I had no worries. They looked after me. They loved me. They protected me. But they suffered for two years and three months, not knowing what would happen. And we were very lucky. We lived through it and nothing happened. No one came knocking on the door. No one saw me. No one found me. And we lived through it. I speak about them wherever I can all through the years. I um, have written about them. I, uh, people have written about them. They are recognized in Yad Vashem. No matter what I do, it's not enough. I travel to Poland very often. The first thing I do is I seek a church any, in any place that I'm at to light a candle for Eva Turkin. She believed in it. I don't, but I do this for her. May they rest in peace. They were good people. They extended a helping hand to a little girl, and a miracle happened. We survived. Thank you very, very much.